I recently participated in Ludum Dare 48, where I took an extreme sport like base jumping and turned it into an arcade game called Super Base Jumper. Let me show you how this happened. Hey. I'm Madbook, and last weekend I spent 48 hours making my game. A game about base jumping, the extreme sport in which very sensible people jump off of buildings and cliffs, sometimes with a wingsuit and hopefully always with a parachute. And before we start with the game's creation, I want to run through a couple of things that I think are important to know with base jumping. With actual base jumping, you literally jump off of cliffs. I know I've already mentioned this, but I feel like it's worth reiterating. I feel like it highlights how rational and sane the people who actually do this are. The only thing that stops you from hitting the floor too hard is a parachute. The risk of injury is incredibly high. The risk of death, however, is actually really low. Oh wait, no, I, I misread that. It's also very high. Now, what my game does is take all of these things, but get rid of the dangerous ones. So let's make some quick adjustments here. You can jump off of cliffs, but not literally. So let's just cross that bit out. The parachute rule seems like a good idea for a mechanic. So we'll keep that in the back of our minds for later on. The risk of injury. Well, we want to avoid this. The fact that you won't literally be jumping off of a cliff and you'll be sat nicely in a desk chair instead is a big help. However, the desk chair does come with a risk risk of repetitive strain injury and bad posture, so I'll leave it to you to decide which is preferable. The risk of death. Once again, we have done a good job of avoiding this by nature of not going outside. However, the game is probably bad for your blood pressure and might be a bit too fast paced and exciting for old people. I haven't had anyone over the age of 20 something play the game yet, so I can't confirm this, but I just don't know if their hearts could handle it. You should statistically be fine though, so nothing to worry about there. So, swiftly moving on. The theme for this jam was deeper and deeper, and as per usual, that involved writing down all of the ideas that I had, throwing them all in the bin because they're all bad, and then staring at a wall hoping a good idea would appear in the area where my brain is supposed to be. And so, I sat there, waiting and waiting. More and more time passed, and no ideas came along. I had no ideas for this jam at all. And this might seem confusing from your perspective. After all, I've already shown you a preview of my finished game, and explained why it's probably less dangerous than real base jumping. I think the problem here is that I'm bad at making a cohesive story for a YouTube video. But anyway, I really did struggle to come up with something for this theme, so I did what I always do in this situation. I follow the Madbook guide to getting good game ideas. Step 1. Start implementing one of the basic game archetypes. Either basic platforming code or a top-down shooter. Step 2. Slap a quirky gimmick, <laughs> I mean core mechanic on top of step 1. Funnily enough, step 3 is actually to subscribe to the channel. So in reference to step 1, I started by just creating a basic platformer with nothing special about it at all. You could just move and jump like in the original Mario games. Then all I needed to think of was a gimmick, I mean all I needed to think of was a core mechanic. With a theme like Deeper and Deeper, I was thinking that I could make a game like Jump King, but instead of trying to go up a massive platform tower, you would try and go down one instead. So I had my core mechanic of falling, everything from this point onwards would revolve around falling in some way. But it turns out it's really easy to travel in the direction of gravity, and that wouldn't provide much challenge to the player if they only had to travel down. However, the only reason this is safe and easy is because usually in platforming games, the player can land on platforms without breaking their legs. What if I made the platforms as deadly to the player as they would be to normal people in real life base jumping? So, core mechanic falling, then to build on this we have platforms as something you have to dodge by falling around them. Perfect. I actually rewrote the player code like three times to get it to feel right. I wanted the player to fall faster if they were going straight down, and sort of slower if they were travelling to the side. I ended up solving this with a bunch of vector math that I implemented manually, but the results are really satisfying in my opinion. To build on this further, I took more inspiration from base jumpers in the form of their parachutes. This stops people from breaking their legs when they hit the ground in a real base jump, so why not have it do the same thing in my game? You can now land on a platform only if you have a parachute you active when you land, otherwise you still go splat. Now, in normal base jumping, you only really get one proper parachute. In my game, you can hold up to three at once because, well, video game logic. My game also limits how long a parachute lasts, which prevents the player from navigating the entire course at a slow snail's pace, because that would be one, slow, two, really boring, and three, slow. 
Instead, they have to tactically choose when to use their parachutes. You can also pick up spare parachutes at certain spawn points on the map, which allowed for some more interesting level design. Speaking of which, level design. The idea for the game is that you have to get from the top of the level to the bottom in one single run. The reset loop is fast. As soon as you go splat, you are one button press away from starting your new fall. If you're going to make your players start from the beginning of the level after every single failure, you'll want to make sure that they don't spend ages waiting around watching cutscenes or waiting to respawn. I try to introduce new challenges to the player one at a time so they aren't overwhelmed. Like, I added these updrafts only in some of the later screens to try and prevent the game from being too boring towards the end. Also, because the screens instantaneously change from one to the next, I tried to put obstacles towards the lower half of the screen to give people more time to react. I did think about having a constantly moving camera that followed the player, but the static screen made it much easier to judge the player motion as well as give a better sense of progression. There are about 22 screens in total and I think that provides a decent enough challenge, especially for a jam entry. It's taken people about 20 to 30 minutes to beat the game on average, which is a pretty good length of time. From the feedback I've had so far, the game is apparently quite compelling too. People really want to try and finish it, which is quite cool. I used a colour palette for the art and really only had enough time to draw the most basic sprites for the game. I know I'm not artistic when it comes to things like this, so I just try to make sure that the art communicates the game clearly, even if it isn't the most visually impressive. This means that for a clear distinction between the sky and platforms, I would need a good amount of contrast. The sky is blue, so I made the platforms orangish because the colour wheel and vague attempt at colour theory? Yeah, I told you I'm not very good at this. I added some basic music and sound effects that I created with BFXR and LMMS, nothing too crazy, and also put in a speedrun timer to the game because I thought that might be fun. So here's a full run of the game from me. This is my fastest time so far, but there are definitely areas that can be improved on. I know one person has already beaten this time, but I'd love to see if anyone could push the time even further, either in the Discord or in the comment section. So yeah, pretty pleased with the game. It's free and a web build on itch.io, so it's very accessible. I would love to hear some feedback and play your entry if you joined Ludum Dare this time around. Subscribe if you enjoyed this video and give it a like if you liked it. These things really help out smaller channels on this platform. Follow me on Twitter to get my occasional updates on there. Join the Discord to talk to and interact with other like-minded devs and until next time, goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.